when Sandy was putting the topic together, practice makes perfect, all I could think about, and you probably know this, is the guy who was in New York, and he was lost. He was a visitor, and he's lost, and he's looking, looking, looking. How do I get to Carnegie Hall? And he asked the New Yorker, how do I get to Carnegie Hall? And what does the New Yorker say? Practice, practice, practice. practice. Yep, that's the, that's the, uh, the talk title today. And I just love our community and the idea of religious science and the practice that we do. Our virtue was forgiveness, is a for amazing virtue. And we will go deeper into how that works for us because it's one of our practices. But this morning I just wanted to, um, to talk about our practice and how it helps us to keep on keeping on. That's what practice, what, when they say, you know, practice makes perfect, I thought perfection, oh no. You know where perfection takes you, to not enoughness. I don't have enough, it's not right, it's not this or that. It's just a saying to encourage. So today I wanted us to be encouraged in these times to do our practice because I know that I need to do spiritual practice when there's mass shootings, wars, bombing, and feeling like I have a contribution to make. Religious science is a place where we change our consciousness. Our community, every Sunday, we have our mission and our vision, creating community, that's what we're doing together, we're inspiring love. And the song by the Eagles was so meaningful because there's a line in it, I'm not going to hide anymore. I'm willing to step up and step out. And then we, embracing all, that's where forgiveness comes in. <laughs> the embracing all issue, I feel, because what that means, intellectually, it sounds so delicious, doesn't it? We're just all going to embrace all. But I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but in a couple of my embraces, forgiveness was really needed. And what did I have to do? I would forgive in a situation where something happened and we got out of sorts, and then it would come up again. I'd walk away, I'd be happy, I'd think, yeah, we've settled this, and something would trigger me, and guess what? I'd have to forgive again, and then work through that. What did I always have to do when forgiveness came? I had to practice, practice, practice. practice. So that's what we're really doing together. I love religious science because I come from a very traditional Catholic background. And for me, my story, the spiritual story I was steeped in was the story of Jesus. And I love that story. But the culmination of his birth is Christmas and then Easter is the resurrection or the understanding that Jesus took us past the limits of our own consciousness. That's what the story's about. So in the end of the story, Jesus is born, and then he comes against a culture that cannot comprehend the consciousness he's holding. He's telling, love is the answer. Love will keep us alive. Love is in you. The Father and I are one. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And the overall culture wasn't prepared for that message. And the evolution of consciousness had gathered many people around him because some people were grasping the idea. The kingdom of heaven is within, it's at hand. And the outermost God, as you so beautifully said, and the innermost God became one. So in that story, in the forgiveness story, what Jesus did on the cross was he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. 
And what that really means is forgive them. They are unconscious about the power that is within them. They're unconscious about who they truly are. They're unconscious. And he took that work, the forgiveness piece, because he knew that they didn't understand the message he was giving. I love that story because for me, it triggered in my own heart when I can't understand something, I can't understand the bombing, I can't understand the violence, I can't understand it. It's beyond me. I'm sure the same for you. It's so out of the box for how I want to live, for what I believe, for the deepest knowing that the kingdom of God is at hand if we'll let it happen. And so I have to go into that forgiveness mode. And in my training, Easter could never have happened, could never have happened without forgiveness. Because Easter was the idea that something unimaginably good comes when you let go and forgive. Resurrecting from the dead is pretty good. Yeah. It's really good. And it also brings us to the place where there is no death. The immortality, the message of Jesus, God lives within us, became very real. And that message started to spread. So what I love about the idea of practice, practice, practice is religious science is a vehicle that I moved into. I was, in, I was raised in one tradition, and it was very helpful and supportive to me, and I expanded into another tradition. And I moved from being reformed, like I needed to be reformed all the time for my sins, to be transformed. And there's a complete difference from there's something wrong with you, your sins. And we sin, we do, we miss the mark. But religious science has offered us transformation. It's one of the many philosophies around right now that is moving us into an evolutionary leap. We can't understand what's happening, but we know something is happening on the planet right now. You can't look at all the chaos, everything that's up, and not understand we are moving in a direction that we can't even fathom. Russell, who is part of our men's group, presented something on AI, artificial intelligence, last week. Is Russell here? No. It was amazing, and he kept talking about we can't even comprehend the consciousness that's unfolding the health that we'll be able to access, the, how the world is going to move in ways we can't even imagine. Well, 2,000 years ago, when the message Jesus brought forth, people couldn't even imagine that what he was saying would change the world the way it did. But it did. And the message was, there is one life. That life is God, and that life indwells us. So for us, we can say that intellectually, but we practice, practice, practice. So this morning, before we call, have our prayer wall, I wanted to talk about our practices. Because in religious science, in our faith tradition, we do certain spiritual practices. And those practices are what take us to move our consciousness out of a situation, a circumstance that holds the limitation, that says, I'm not enough, that says the world can't change. There's nothing we can do. It's bigger than we even can imagine. There is something that we do. We do it collectively every Sunday. We join our wisdom people on the wall, communities all over the world that are working on the same thing, and that is elevating our consciousness to the idea that we are one, that this world is a gift, and we are to treasure it. We are to hold it, 
and we are to work out our differences. And so the practices we engage in to do that today, I wanted to just go through today and talk about meditation, prayer, and letting go. The practices we do is meditation. And this morning, Madeline did a beautiful meditation. Every Sunday, we're at 10 o'clock. We go and we sit in meditation. And that means we come together, and usually we close our eyes because we don't get distracted by the outer circumstances that are around us or in our lives. And the symbolic gesture of closing our eyes means I let all the outer circumstances go and I turn within. I let that go for just a while. I let go of the worry. I let go of my issue, my relationship, my health, the world, the planet, the church. I let it go and I turn within. And in that turning, we allow ourselves to be nurtured, to feel that that presence, that love of God is right where we are. It's not separate from us. This is consciousness changing because when we leave the meditation room, we come out into the world of form and we get right back into our stuff. But we do it from a different place because we're practicing and practicing and practicing to allow ourselves to believe and accept that something greater lives within us, lives us, and wants us to move through life as it's a gift, a blessing, something that we're here to enjoy, something that we're here to nurture, something that's so beautiful. But it's taking a shift, and that's what meditation does for us. We find that God within, and then we forget. And then what do we do? Practice, practice, practice. And that's what makes us really good at something. That is encouraging us to move forward. And then we do prayer. And for us, prayer is not a beseeching, please, oh, just let it happen. We feel we are co-creating with God in our prayers that that infinite presence shows up in us as us. Do you know how radical a thought that is? It's radical to think that God in us as us, that doesn't leave us helpless. That doesn't leave us powerless. It brings us to the place where we are evolving for the next 2,000 years into that consciousness that there is within us the healing power, the blessing power, the power to change our lives, the power to change our culture. It's all here. And as we practice and practice and practice, we get better at it. And then the next generation after us is even better at it. The, and then the next generation is even better. So we're doing our beautiful work together. For us, when we pray, we open our hearts. So Ernest Holmes said, the idea of prayer changes as our idea of God changes. Our idea of prayer changes as our idea of God changes. And once we have that feeling of God as love, as goodness, as a blessing, our prayers change. When we have the idea that God is the indwelling presence of our lives, the very breath we breathe, our prayer changes. And so how we move in our practice in religious science is we do our prayer, we change our consciousness in five steps. It's called spiritual mind treatment, prayer. We don't give it that word prayer in the same old way of prayer. We have changed it because through five steps, we move, like sometimes like a stone, we move our consciousness 
to embrace a new thought. When we say change your thinking, change your life, we mean it. The five steps of, <clears throat> of prayer is, the first step is we move to the idea God is. God is. And then the second step is, I am one with that. So God is love. I am one with that. God is grace. I am, I am one with that. God is health. I am one with that. God is abundance. I am one with that. We move to the consciousness God is, and, what, and I am one with that presence. And so step two is that the I amness, I, you can't say I am unless you're conscious. When Jesus, uh, or I don't know who's asked, oh, Moses asked God to identify himself. He said, I am that I am. Well, because I am means I am conscious. I am that. And we declare that to be in us, that consciousness. So our third step of treatment is affirmation. We affirm. We declare. We receive. So if you're working on something in your prayer life, an issue, personal, collective, whatever the issue is, and you speak, I am you speak what it is, that quality of God that you want to express. I am health. I am abundance. I am grace. I am forgiveness. I am goodness itself. You make that declaration, that realization, you make real in your mind, that quality of God lives within me, and I now am receiving that, declaring that, and then the next step, the fourth step of treatment is thanksgiving. And I always think thanksgiving is sending God a thank you note. Because you can't give thanks unless you receive something. When you receive something, you say thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that goodness. So the fourth step is so important because it means I've moved from my head to my heart. I've moved from thinking, oh, it sounds so grandiose and fabulous, and it does, and it is, but when it goes from here to here, then the heart feels humbled, and you can just say, thank you. Thank you for giving me life. Thank you for this gift. Thank you for the goodness that's here. Thank you for reminding me that I am powerful, that all the gifts are within me. Thank you for allowing me to go past the conditions, the circumstances, and the situation and come to the reality of a spiritual truth that matters in my life. And then the fifth step of treatment is letting go. And um, the letting go really is all of a sudden, I don't want to pick it up again. I've been doing this work. I might have to repeat the treatment because if I'm forgiving or I'm, it's a health issue, I still might not be feeling totally full on the outer, but on the inner, I'm whole, complete, and perfect. Now, we could sound crazy saying these things to people who really say, what? How can you say you're healthy? Look at you, look what's happening. Believe me, I, I come from a tradition, they say that to me. Are you sure you're not in some kind of crazy cult? <laughs> it's, you know, because, and I say that, and not disrespectfully, I say it heartfully, because I understand when the idea of God changes, the idea of prayer changes, the idea of life changes, when I know that there's an infinite presence within me, within you, within all of us, that wants to express its good and needs us. We sing it every Sunday. God needs us to shine our light. That's what we're here to do. So we're going to have a prayer wall this morning. And um, our practitioners and our ministers will be here. And if you have something that you want to let go of, you want to declare, you want to practice. Wow, let me just get the idea. I don't have to live with that condition. 
I do not have to live in that circumstance. I can move, I can change, because that in me that lives through me wants my highest and my best good. That's what we're gonna do this morning. So before um, I call up the practitioners uh, to the healing wall, I just want to remind us that we are practicing religious scientists. We have a method that we practice, meditation, prayer, and letting go. And letting go means allowing yourself to let go of the condition, the circumstance, the issue that you might be holding on to that keeps you from being who you truly are. We have a great and mighty work to do. We have a fabulous community to work in. We have each other to walk the path with. And it truly is a blessing. I'm just going to close with my favorite author, John O'Donohue, um, who says, awaken to the mystery of being here and enter the quiet immensity of your own presence. Have joy and peace in the temple of your senses. Receive encouragement when new frontiers beckon. Respond to the call of your gift and the courage to follow the path and practice, practice, practice. <laughs> so if our...